Hyung Zhao Lee. Did I say it right? Yeah. Hello. Wait, uh, let me get up here because I can see my legs. Short people. Oh my god, I'm too tall for this. Fuck. Um, short people in the back, can you see me? Can you see my legs? Okay, great. So, I'm sure many of you here will look at me and say, how is that person Asian? <laughs> and it's quite simple. The answer is colonization. <laughs> and, you know, both my parents are both of black and Asian descent. I am actually the third generation of Afro-Asian in my family. And, you know, we would always go to several events to celebrate our Chinese heritage, several Lunar New Year banquets, my parents always dressed me up in Tang Zhuang outfits, but we were always taught as kids that you are not Asian, you are black. My father would always tell things like, look at your skin, what color is that? It's black. So I didn't really give myself permission to explore what it meant to be Asian until I got to college when I was discovering ballet, discovering um, Filipino dances, because I'm also Filipino. <laughs> also discovering Desi dances, because I'm also Desi, you know, it's just wonderful. Um, and there was this wonderful organization that I came across in my junior year called the Asian Northwestern University Project. And in this group, we were always talking or holding dialogues about our experiences as Asians, we're meant to be Asian. And for someone like me, I was always like, well, I don't really, I'm like a guest here in this space. Like, I don't belong here. But then when I started to really embody these dances, incorporate that into my work, I began to realize, no, I do belong here. I may not be the right color for some people. We know anti-blackness is real in our community. Yeah. Yeah. I may not be the right color, but I'm Asian. I'm an Asian American. <laughs> so we have this wonderful Asian pride rally on campus. It was actually my first ever protest. Oh God, uh, oh, many more to come. And I actually danced ballet at the protest. It was quite lovely. And this was a practice I wound up carrying way on into a little thing called a pandemic which was terrible, but at many Black Lives Matter protests, um, I would use ballet as a form of protest because being a dancer or being an artist of color is an act of revolution, yeah. hands Woo. down. And so during the lockdown, during 2020, I founded this little teeny tiny thing called the Blasian March. Uh, which is a black Asian solidarity uh, action. And we didn't really get any attention until 2021 when there was the massive news coverage of the anti-Asian violence. And so myself, an entire team of women of co femmes of color who were indigenous, black, Filipina, Chinese, Pakistani, um, uh, indigenous, I said that already. And you know, we started to get a lot of press coverage. It was kind of like, what is happening? It's kind of scary. Like, we have this giant rally coming up for the Asian community. Will any Asians show up for someone who looks like me? And the answer was yes. And the answer was hundreds. And I might need a little assistance for a quick show and tell. Pull this banner out. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. Other way. There we are. Oi. Can folks see that? This is the banner that we carried from Washington Square Park all the way up to uh, Columbus Circle to stand together against such violence. And thank you to my lovely assistants. You may take it down now so I can see my legs some more. <laughs> and it was beautiful, like, photos of the protests went globally viral. Um, yes, 
Uh, my friend in California texted me on, messaged me on Facebook and was like, and I haven't seen you or her few in years, but I just heard you on NPR, what the fuck? And I was like, I know, it's weird. Um, one of my daddies, and we have amazing sex, by the way, uh, who, <laughs> he moved to LA. I was like, I want my dick, daddy. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, he texts me, he's like, oh my God, my sister in Michigan just saw you on CNN. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and while all this was happening, I found myself experiencing a lot of cruelty from folks I had trusted, folks in the movement I thought were down for the cause, for the revolution. And this, is mostly, this mostly came from a lot of folks in the BLM movement. Um, folks would tell me things like, oh, you only go to Asian rallies now? Like, what is that? Or someone messaged me and said, what do you mean by Asian power? And my absolute favorite was this person, not to me, at a party where I was present, screamed out, Rohan just needs BBC. As if sex with a black man would fuck the Asian out of me or something, I don't know. And that made me so incredibly tired. I realized no matter how hard I tried to fit into the BLM movement, I wasn't gonna fit in no matter how hard I tried to fit in with the Asian community, I wasn't gonna fit in because I'm black. I'm tired of apologizing. I'm tired of fighting to fit in. I'm tired of trying to appease people who will never ever value me, who will scream black lives matter, but not black Asians matter. It doesn't matter anymore. I said, fuck it. So we did a black Asian pride rally. Next show and tell. Oh my god, my god, my god. Okay. I'll make it quick. Valeria, I see you. <laughs> so, at that Pride rally, I wore these terno sleeves to celebrate being a gorgeous Pinai that I am. Okay, next part. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then the Blasian March went to Los Angeles. Oh my god, we went to a different part of the country. We had a black, Asian, trans power rally out there. Okay, power. Oh, thank you. I got to wear this. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. I got to wear this. Han Fu. You know, give a look. <laughs> And it didn't stop there. We went to Chicago. I spoke in Seattle. This thing's gonna come off me. <laughs> then, oh my God, it got even better. <laughs> Last one, Valeria, I promise. I went to Switzerland. What? And I got to speak about the Blasian March and how to build cross-racial solidarity. And I wore this malong to celebrate being Filipino. And at, also in Switzerland, I wore this chipo in front of an entire crowd, a bunch of drunk ass white people. <laughs> and I sang the black national anthem. And all those people who are talking shit about me are nowhere to be found. They are not in my life anymore. I don't care because what I learned through all this process is that it's not about belonging. I don't care if I don't belong anymore. What matters is that you make this world, you make the world you want. And those who fit in come in, and those who don't, they go their way. Thank you.